Hello everyone and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 as we hear the beautiful water running here, right? And uh, we are in this Ansur's temple. Is that how you pronounce it? Ansur or Ansur? The, apparently a dragon, a legendary dragon that you're trying to recruit to help you in the final fight against the Elder Brain. And the legend is that the dragon lives under the city of Baldur's Gate and that's where we are right now, okay? So... <clears throat> We have several different challenges to, to undertake. We've beaten the Chamber of Courage. Now we have to go back the way we came and beat other challenges. If you're wondering who our winged friend is, that's Deva, or Diva, or I don't know how to say his name. He's a summon that we have uh, Shadowheart using now. Her Dr. Oink's recommendation last stream, and it seems to be working pretty well. Oh boy. Where do we come in from? Okay. So we have other directions to go. We can go this way, or we can go this way. Like, we have different ways to go here. This is where we came in, correct? Yes. So the next way to go would be what appears to be a bunch of shadows over here. Darkness. Hung on the wall. Almost like an art gallery. An art gallery. Statue of a Balder, and he's probably going to tell us Chamber of Justice. He'll probably tell us what we need to do in this one, right? A true champion knows justice and eliminates those who stand in its way. Restore the balance of justice. Okay. How would we go about doing that? Look closer at the apple. <laughs> the apple. The painting depicts a red-haired man stealing a shiny apple from a cart in an open-air market. Okay. You know this market, the Wide, where Baldur's Gate citizens and visitors gather to conduct trade and wax political. So, the apple is a theft, basically. Okay. The child. The child. A red-haired man is portrayed with his cloak's hood lowered, giving an apple to a smiling urchin. Several other children <clears throat> huddled behind the one receiving the apple, hands outstretched. So, what they're, uh, what they're getting at here is that this guy robbed an apple to give it to the kids who need the food, right? Okay. What is with... Wait a minute. You see what I see? Are there writing on the wall up there? There's no writing on the wall over here. There's writing on the wall here. Above it. Do you see that? You can't select the writing, though. That's weird. All right. The induction. <clears throat> the induction. A red-haired man is depicted in hushed conversation with a dark-haired woman. Does she have writing on her back? She wears a cloak with an unusual symbol on it tally marks totaling the number nine okay don't know what that's about it's all the same guy though all right the theft the theft a red-haired man is depicted in the hall of wonders thieving what looks to be a priceless artifact hmm. it's an astrolabe of entrapment uh. It could hold a dozen gin within it. Perhaps even more. Huh. Similar to the gin that we encountered that was stuck in that lamp, remember? Okay. Keep going. <clears throat> the chase. The chase. A red-haired man is depicted running through the city streets, a flaming fist officer chasing just behind. A cloaked woman, hair dark as a raven, looks on from a safe distance. Okay. And the judgment. The judgment. A stern judge, his pockets full of coin, orders a red-haired man to the gallows. A shiny apple rests on the ground nearby. 
So if you follow the story, there's a guy who's kind of like a Robin Hood figure. He steals from the rich to give to the poor. So he robs the apple to give it to these poor kids who need it for food. Then a woman with a nine on her back, which I can't help but think that must be a reference to, say, the Nine Fingers, you know, Thieves' Guild, talks to the guy and convinces him to steal this astrolab that holds, uh, holds the, um, whatchamacallit in it, these jinn or magical powers. So he steals it, and then he gets captured, and then he gets executed because of it. So that's the story. Okay. So now, what the hell? Don't we have someone who's immune to darkness? Are one of our characters not completely immune to darkness? I thought someone was, but I guess not. Or watch, it was probably... How much you want to bet it was a Starian? <laughs> how much you want to bet it was a Starian, right? Because I swear someone was completely immune to darkness. So I wanted to walk in there, but if you walk in there, we're not going to be able to see, right? I fucked that up. I didn't mean to do that. That's what I meant to do. So. The judge. Okay. Can I read it? Like, what's this? Shrouded painting? Look closer. Shadows are blocking me. I need to get rid of them somehow. So there's more, more, more paintings, but I can't see them because of the darkness. I need to put one of the paintings here. Can I talk to the judge? So you need to put the the picture of the person responsible for the crimes here. Well, in reality, first of all, the red-haired guy did commit a crime when he stole the apple. Even though he was intending to give it to the children, it's still a crime. Now, is it a noble crime like Robin Hood? Yes, but it's still a crime. He also committed a crime when he stole the Astrolab. But who was the real source of the true theft would have been Nine Fingers, who was the one who convinced him to steal the Astrolab. That's my guess anyway, right? Now, how can we get rid of this darkness? Do we have something that will dispel the darkness? What's next? Doesn't she have a spell that dispels the darkness? Like, if I cast Daylight... Shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. Shadows are blocking me. I need to get rid of them somehow. Shadows wow, it doesn't even work. I need to get rid of them. It somehow. should, but it doesn't. We cast Daylight in the center of the darkness, and it's still dark. So how, how on earth are we going to dispel this darkness? Right? There's no time to waste. I have no clue how that's not working. Right? It says it dispels all darkness around it, yet it's not. Shrouded sentence. This judge is obscuring paintings within six meters, preventing judgment from being passed on an accused soul. So do we just kill it? It says... Is immune to slashing, piercing, bludgeoning, acid, thunder, necrotic, fire, lightning, cold, psychic, radiant force. He's immune to every kind of damage. He's also amorphous. The creature's body is difficult to manipulate. It cannot be shoved, pushed, or thrown. He's also ethereal. It cannot be shoved, thrown, or used as an improvised weapon. While lightly or heavily obscured, the creature gains the ability to blend into shadows and become invisible. But weak to sunlight. <laughs> I 
excuse me. <clears throat> hmm. Cursed. It says it's cursed. You heard what he said. The dishonorable judge was banished, but judgment must still be passed. So now we can see the three paintings. The hanging. The hanging. A red-haired man is depicted hanging from a gallows as a crowd looks on. This is probably what happened. There's a child in the crowd. A falling tear leaving a trail on his cheek. Right. The kid is sad that he's going to die because he's the one who helped the kids. He's the Robin Hood like character, right? All's well that ends. Yeah, here. As bad as it could have. <clears throat> Freedom. A red haired man walks the streets of Baldur's Gate, clad in a billowing cloak. You catch a glimpse of a sly smile beneath his hood and a golden coin in his hand. So, why would he have a golden coin in his hand? Because he was paid by nine fingers of the Thieves Guild to steal that astrolabe and he got away with it? Okay, what's going on here? Hello? Uh oh. Look. Uh oh. Not good. It, cr it crapped out. I'm frozen. I can move other people, but my character got screwed up. Look, he's fucked. <laughs> he got locked into an interaction. What the shit? What just happened? Oh, no. What is going on? This is very, very bad. What the fuck? Look. We're all fine, but when I go back to him... What the fuck? He's stuck. Game of the year, guys. Look at this. <clears throat> this is amazing. Not reaction. Now she can't interact with it. Yeah, we're fucked. I can't do anything. I seriously can't do anything. We have to redo the entire thing. Because the game doesn't autosave, right? It not only get autosave. We have to do the whole thing over because it glitched. What a piece of shit. God damn it. What's the story? Can't do anything. Oh, skip! That doesn't work either. It says skip, and I can't skip. I can't go to camp. I can't do anything. Look. Enough waiting. I crave blood. Nope. He's still stuck over there. Look. <sighs> Fucking fucker fuck. Whoa, he's still glitched. I teleported him away. And on the screen, he's not there. Look. On the screen, he's over here. But in the game, when I go back to him, it still thinks he's here. Look. It still thinks he's there. He glitched. 
Wow, this game is totally fucked up right now. Wow. Faith will guide me. Wow, they fucked up. Great. 15 minutes wasted. I mean, we don't have to watch it. We don't have to look at the, the paintings again, right? <clears throat> Game of the year. Nicely polished. <laughs> oh, yeah. The puzzle's meant to be tricky. The puzzle's meant to soft lock your game, huh? Wow. <laughs> you didn't solve the puzzle fast enough. Fuck you. Start from the beginning. <clears throat> okay. Thanks for nothing. Okay. Paintings hung on the wall. Almost like an art gallery. Vincere, vivere. <clears throat> Never a dull moment. Let's try reading this one first. The cell. A stern prison guard slides a warm meal into the thief's cell. The red haired man has a ten day left to serve, judging by the scratchings on the wall behind him. So, what they're saying is, <clears throat> how should he be punished? Should he be murdered outright with a hanging? Should he be let off scot-free and then receive his payment by the Nine Fingers of the Thieves Guild for the, the astrolab that he, that he stole? Or should he receive jail time? I believe he should receive jail time. I don't think he should be hung for, for stealing. Obviously... If you were to say he was getting punished for stealing the apple, I'd be like, then maybe, you know, a lighter sentence or whatever. But he definitely should serve at least jail time for stealing the Astrolab, in my opinion. So that's what I'm going with. And we're going to put it over here, correct? Okay. Find it now. It'll even look like. <clears throat> uh, what does it look like? You can find it. There it is. The dishonorable judge and applied Lex Talionis. The principle of the sentence being proportional. To the crime. It worked. You are a paragon of justice. Nice. Proceed. Yes, the sentence is proportional to the crime. If the crime was stealing an apple to give it to the kids, then the guy should have gotten off. But because he was stealing it for profits, he has to be punished. But he also shouldn't die. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Two down and one to go, right? We have to go, is it this way? Let's save. this over here? It's an invisible bridge. See this? We have enemies to our right. Oh, what do we have here? Hold on. The Chamber of Insight. It's dead. Uh, a mops and Suelto. What the fuck? You talk to the statue. <clears throat> How far away from me is my TV? Mm -hmm. Ten feet? Seven? Eight feet? If I were to lay down flat, probably my head would touch about the front of the TV stand, and it's maybe a foot back from the front of the TV stand. Maybe like seven, eight feet? I don't know. 
Statue of a Baldurin. <clears throat> a good leader has the insight to find good counsel. As a war reaches its end, there is one who doesn't advise for the city's prosperity. Find him and strike him down. So they want me to fight or kill the person who's not trying to help the city. How tall am I? I'm just under six feet tall. Ooh, a book. Dead's Virtues of the Union. I want to read this. Hold on. Get back here. <clears throat> no! Thought this place was just a legend. <laughs> Tall tales <clears throat> just keep coming true. Do a quick save, and then we'll try to see what we can do catch these books. I guess maybe I should do it myself. Hold on. Let's separate the party. That way they don't follow me and get in the way. <clears throat> Especially this guy. Slide of hand failed. Hold still, will you? Can I just clobber it? Hold still, will you? Hold still, will you? Hold still, will you? Don't I wear glasses? Forgot if I'm nearsighted or farsighted. I, I have, I cannot see extreme distance. I'm okay seeing anything in a normal room. It's only extreme distance, or whatever that is. I don't even know. <laughs> I threw it. Oh, it worked. Swelto's Ethics of War. Okay, this is Swelto. My colleague on maps proposes fair rules of engagement in times of war and forgiveness upon victory. Are we to spare our enemies then once they have fallen to our might? Are we to put all hatred behind us when surrender is offered? Well, indeed not. What we shall do once our opponent gathers new armies and masses them once again along our borders. We shall wage another war and count the life snuffed out by our own magnanimity. Once an enemy kingdom is conquered, it must be raised to the ground. Only then can we be free of its specter. So that is Suelto. <clears throat> Wants war no matter what and crushing of enemies. hilarious okay here's stead <clears throat> it is the virtues of unions it is quite obvious that larger kingdoms offer benefits to all peoples within as a kingdom grows so does its field its populace and its economy a few charred corpses is a worthy sacrifice if a dragon offers to share its hoard after all so too you should seek union however imperfect should a powerful kingdom march its army on your borders some friction is inevitable of course citizens rights might erode for instance but much lesser issues will be sanded down by the march of time, which is the price of peace. So this person is saying, sacrifice the few for the ongoing better prosperity of the many. That's what this person is saying. Stead, Stead says, sacrifice the few to help the many. Swelto says, basically, just kill all your enemies to make sure they never come back.
Here's a map. <clears throat> my life has been a long succession of pleasures. To see my town, take my, to my ideas, and cease legal discrimination of local orcs. To see my fights against horrid living conditions in city factories take off. To have the chance to see a new generation take to these ideas of a better, kinder, fairer, intelligent world and run with it to new reaches of the continent. It was not a life without struggle, however, and I shall regret its failures. My old friend Suelto comes to mind, who adopted such cruel ideologies later in life. I will forever console myself in the idea that such a brilliant mind would only conceive such theories under the strain of exile and the promise of reinstatement as she ultimately was. <clears throat> so basically, Suelto was being threatened to be exiled. And so then they came up with these other theories, right? During the threat of exile and reinstatement is what they're saying. Well, during a sailor of exquisite renown who founded the city of Baldur's Gate many years ago. Well, during claimed guardian and friend Anser, right? Were Anser's skills and brighter his breadth. Yet after betrayal too piercing to recount here and worthy detail, Anser fled beneath the stone. Thereby changing the name of the region, he now slumbers under the match's draconic lineage. Still. Ugh. Wow, I am so sorry about that. I really didn't mean to do that, everyone. I'm, I apologize profusely for my disgusting behavior. <clears throat> so. That's it, right? We have to make our decision now. So, Maps is the one who is basically the goody two shoes. Everyone should be stopping discriminated against and all of that. Right? Suelto is the one that says just crush your enemies no matter what. Make sure they never come back. And then we've got Stead, who's like, sacrifice the few to help the many. Right? So, honestly. What is the question again? Let's actually hear the wording of the question. Strike down the advisor who would lead the city to ruin. Strike down the advisor who would lead the city to ruin. Well, let's think about this. One person is trying to have fairness for all. One person says, crush your enemies and destroy them. Make sure they never come back to hurt you. The one person says, sacrifice the needs of the few for the many. Right? Right? But honestly, out of all three of them, it is quite obvious that larger kingdoms offer benefits to all peoples within. As a kingdom grows, so does its field, its populace, and its economy. A few charred corpses is a worthy sacrifice if a dragon offers to share its hoard after all. So too, you should seek union, however imperfect, should a powerful kingdom march its army to your, on your borders. The friction is inevitable, of course. Citizens' rights might erode, for instance, but such lesser issues will be sanded down by the march of time, such as the price of peace. Stead. What Stead is saying is, sacrifice everything for ongoing existence. They would rather have, the, have Baldur's Gate exist, even in an awful state, as long as it still exists, while the other two are basically saying, <clears throat> we care about the people and want to protect them. Even though... Suelto is saying to do it in a bad, like, kill our, our opposition. It's still looking out for the people. Literally, Stead doesn't give two fucks about the people. So it's Stead. Stead is the one we need to strike. They want you to think Suelto, but it's not. It's Stead. This is Fury. What? In your ignorance, you've chosen poor counsel. Unacceptable. What? Uh, wrong. Absolutely fucking wrong. Wrong. In, in one case, if you just destroy all your enemies, that will be in favor of your people. The other person 
wanting to help the people out with rights and everything. The other person says, just fuck the people as long as we still exist. That's the worst. That's complete bullshit. That makes no sense at all. I made the right choice and the writers of the game don't fucking understand anything. That is idiotic what just happened. Completely idiotic. And I, you know what, Larian? Debate me on that one because you're fucking wrong. Out of those three, if Stead was the one to be followed nonstop, your whole fucking nation would fall apart because no one would have be treated fairly or have rights. You're morons. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, I guess we'll fight. It's all good. Uh, Fallen Fighter. You fight this dude? It is con Oh, we have Concussive Smash. Make Daze your target. Wrathful Smite. Possibly frightens the target. Also, the ability to revive, which is pretty cool. Uh, hmm. They're about the same damage output, so it's not a big deal. It's not a different change here. I don't think you can frighten, uh... Bludgeoning damage against his enemy is double. Oh! These are both bludgeon, actually, so it doesn't really matter. Instant kill. Double damage. Nice. Disappeared. No, that person did not want constant war. You're wrong, Orange. Not Orange. Um, Eternal. Eternal says... Are you crazy? Are you being serious? The person wanted constant war. No, they didn't. They said your enemies, meaning someone who's already established to be an enemy of your nation, that you should smite them and wipe them out. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's looking out for the people of Baldur's Gate. So is looking for rights and things like that, like equality. The one person who didn't look out for the rights of anyone in Baldur's Gate was Stead. They basically said survival at any cost doesn't don't care about the rights of the people. I made the right choice. And the fucking people at Larian have no idea what the fuck they're doing. That is absolutely terrible what they just said. <clears throat> okay. Well, the one problem is this asshole has this aura of protection and the spirit guardians. <clears throat> the paladin and any nearby enemies have a plus two bonus to saving throws. Very annoying, right? Doesn't this require concentration, though? If we can end our concentration, it's all good. If she throws back there, and then she, if she teleports, then she can use her ability, her, her, her scream. Yeah, let's do that. One, two. What are you doing? Why didn't you throw? What happened? Why didn't she throw the fucking spear? I told her to throw, and she walked forward like a dunce. What an idiot. I have no idea why she just did that. <clears throat> well, that was completely idiotic. <laughs> Trying to break his concentration is not working. Frightened him, he still didn't lose his concentration. God damn. I will ascend. Hmm. 
Only 45% chance? Ugh. I guess I'm gonna have to have her walk into the aura. What am I gonna do, right? She has to walk in there. I will not know failure. Oh, no. So much for him. <clears throat> Probably not worth using the bonus action right now because she can't get over to this guy, see? She wouldn't be able to reach him. So probably not worth it. Because all she'll be able to do is range and her range sucks. I probably won't waste it. Time to push my luck again. I have no sorcery points. What should I do? She's bludgeoning, right? She actually is bludgeoning and they take double bludgeoning damage. One left. We can't. Oh, there's two left? Who's the other one? Oh my god, I didn't even see this guy. I walked right by him. I totally didn't even see him once. Wow. <laughs> Alright, we're alright. We're fine. <clears throat> I wouldn't even waste it. They're not gonna do anything. Okay. Clack, clack. Just sat there. Clack, clack. <clears throat> wow, they're terrible. They miss everything. So now we didn't pass the challenge? I don't even understand. We should have passed the challenge. I made the right decision. The writers of the game are idiots. And don't understand anything. I'm serious about that. That's bullshit. I totally made the informed right choice there. If you went with Stead's philosophy, he would have ended up sacrificing the entire populace and their rights and everything in order to have Baldur's Gate keep surviving. It's the absolute worst philosophy you can have is sacrificing the people over and over for the common good. At what time do you finally say you can't keep sacrificing, right? Existence isn't necessarily always the right thing. You have to have at what cost existence, at what level is existence worth existing? And the guy did not believe in that whatsoever. He's an asshole, right? Now, I don't agree with Suelto saying whenever you have an enemy, go crush them. But at the same time, that would have helped the people of Baldur's Gate. <clears throat> Seriously? We have to fight again? How many of these do we have to fight? What the fuck? What the fuck? I guess we have to just fight everyone. Even though I did this all correctly, now there's enemies in every room. Wow. Thanks, assholes. Wow, Lyrian, you guys are dicks. 
You don't understand philosophy, and now you're punishing me for it by making me fight a zillion guys. <laughs> wow. You double suck on this one. Sorry, that's really bad. He heals, right? No, he doesn't revive a fight, so he can't even do anything right now. Why does he have two main hand attacks? What? <laughs> they even two of the same thing. Wow. <laughs> Alright, Karlak. It's time to fuck these guys up, because they're assholes, and they deserve to get whooped. Ready? This'll help. Nice. Moving that ass. Look at all that damage. Wow, that's great. Fucking spear is so good, man. Alright. <clears throat> Looks like I couldn't get close enough. We're all good, though. We're frenzy. Time to strike. Yeah, this is gonna stink. She's not gonna get over there. Even if she dashes, I don't think she's gonna get over there. even worth it yeah i mean she can misty step and then she can action surge so maybe we'll do that the motherfucker counterspelled my misty step so now i wasted that you son of a bitch you motherfucker I received a three dollar and thirty three cent tip from Jay. Larry is correct. The guy who chose Stead wanted to put the needs of the city as a whole over the needs of a few. It may be morally gracious, but still in the interest of the city as a whole. Twelto, the correct answer, wanted constant tit for tat war, imperialism, revenge, and genocide, which is much less in the interest of the city than what Stead had said. Wrong. You're talking about the interest of the city if you mean the city is just a body. I'm talking about the citizens of the city, which is really what the body of the city is. What is a city if it has no people living in it? Because they're all dead. But you're saying makes absolutely no sense. And that's what I mean about these fucking philosopher idiots who think they know anything about real life. It doesn't matter if the city survives if everyone in it is fucked up and dead. You understand? So, no, it's completely wrong. The philosophy is wrong. I don't, I don't care what you idiot philosophers say. That is completely stupid. Wrong. Okay. <laughs> These Wrong. Have seen everything. Chain lightning. Well, I killed a few. I, what's surprising is I guess there's a limit to how many it can bounce around, which I didn't even know, but apparently there is. Yeah. No, I'm not allowed to be wrong from time to time, especially when I'm correct. <laughs> especially when I'm dead on correct, I'm not allowed to be wrong. I'm definitely correct. Hmm. Hmm. Wait a minute. Turn undead, right? But it's only in a range, so what we should do is once we get over here, turn all these undead over here, right? In one fell swoop. 
What level? Oh, that uses her special thing too, so that's not even gonna use a spell slot, so that's great. Maybe I could maybe I could dash? No. I'm gonna use my turn if I dash. Because if I dash over there, then I can do it, but no. They're all level fives. Her good spells are all level fives. We'll use divine intervention. We could use a level three spirit guardians and walk over there. Hmm. Sunbeam? Nope. I'm not in a position to use Sunbeam at all. It wouldn't. It wouldn't really help. Well, it would hit these three. You know what? Fuck it. Just do it. Do Sunbeam. Oh, killed two. He got saved because he's a lucky motherfucker. <clears throat> I'm definitely going to use Turn Undead when they all get closer. For now, I guess we'll summon a Spirit Weapon. In reality, you can't be wrong. Like, everyone has a different philosophy in life about how you think about stuff. So in reality... You, I'm not wrong, but Larian also isn't wrong. You can agree to disagree. And I totally understand their perspective. So, the thing is, why would you be punished for having a perspective that's different? It doesn't even make sense. Like, what it should be is... It, that shouldn't be a challenge like that, because there's no right and wrong answer. You know? Why do you think people have debated these kind of things for, oh, uh, you know, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years? Because there is no direct answer to a question like that. <clears throat> They're all trying to attack the spiritual weapon. Okay. I have to have her walk a little bit. Under their noses. Why is the path interrupted? What are you talking about? My little <laughs> That was cool. The one who I need to hit perfectly, Pat's interrupting. I thought she had the spin move, but I guess that's Lazelle that has the spin move. Okay. I'm Fury. I am dead. All right, Lizelle. It's time. It's party time. It's party time. <laughs> oh, yes. The only bummer is she doesn't have enough movement to do one more. <laughs> Darn. <clears throat> All right. Well, I guess we'll use a ranged attack then, right? She killed four in one turn, though. Well, it's 
guy's an asshole. He's right in my face, too. I didn't even know that dude was standing there. I had no idea. Got him. No more spirit guardians. On I go. Heal everyone. Beautiful. By the way, two tips have come in, and I will shout those out when I can. <laughs> Fucking critical miss. Oh my god. Oh, excuse me. This doesn't really matter. Victory awaits. Blood comes easy these days. Critical miss. <laughs> oh my god. Let's finish this. Okay. Sheesh. Rested enough. Now forward. Now. Where do we go next? I don't even know where we go next, like we were punished for doing things wrong. Oh, did the door open? Is this the door? This is the door. It opened. All right, I guess we should save, right? Let's make a new save. I have two shout-outs to do. I can't wait to sleep. So first of all, I got a $10 tip from Baldurian. Happy Saturday. A good day for a Baldur's Gate 3 stream. Thank you to Baldurian for a $10 tip. Yes, and we're trying to make progress here. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it or not because we got that wrong. So hopefully it doesn't destroy the whole dungeon's outcome. Even though I really didn't get it wrong because it's a matter of philosophical opinion. Um, and I got a $3 tip. The secret answer to the puzzle was to kill all three and select Baldurian Trump to make Baldur's Gate great again. Try that next time. There you go. Those wily Baldurian politics, right? Okay, thank you for that. So yeah, this gate is open. This gate was locked before, and now we can go. So here we go. The Dragon Sanctum. I think we want to long rest here, because I definitely don't have uh, everything done, right? Oh no, what's going on? I definitely don't have everything done, and uh, I definitely need to uh, have all my abilities. I have, like, no spells. So I'm going to long rest. I don't know why we're in this campsite. This is weird. We're obviously in the temple. You would think there would be a campsite there, but there's not. There's Minsk. Minsky boy. He's in the camp now. <clears throat> Let's see. Declan says, Phil's to right to be fair. Basically, the guy that would be taken over by a larger group doesn't actually care about the people. That guy didn't care about the people at all, Stead. He didn't give a shit about the people. All he cared about was the continued existence of the city. But there's no city without the people. That's the point I'm making. You'll end up with an empty fucking city with a, a, a couple rulers left and nobody else. That's not the way to live. Fucking, she still won't leave. 
Nothing new in camp, it doesn't look like. I just wanted to check, but no, no one seems to have any uh, dialogue. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Baldurin was the founder of the city, one of the more famous adventurers in this part of the world. Here you go. I'm telling you, like, there was no answer to that. So I, I feel like that's stupid that they made that, like, oh, this is the right answer. There, what, I mean, it's cool to think about philosophy playing a game like this, right? It's like, wow, that's neat. That makes you think. But there was no answer. It's Everyone has a difference of opinion on that kind of stuff. Why do you think that philosophy is such a, de a thing that's still such a debate to this day? So why the hell would you have that be the answer to a puzzle? That's just really dumb. <clears throat> okay. With courage does the hero march, fettered by the taxing chains of fear. A stalwart soul must ever persevere. With insight does the hero choose, guidance born of ancient wisdom proven. Peace, not strife, the undenied conclusion. With justice does the hero rule. Lead not the guiltless lamb to bloody slaughter, no, cleanse the lion's sins in sacred water. With strategy does the hero scheme. So this is a new strategy. A mind, a hundred steps ahead, your allies close, your rivals stunned in dread. Worthy you are found. <laughs> Go forth, hero. Seize your fate and rise, great worm, heart of the gate. He said, doesn't seem aware a few of the rules were bent to tell. <laughs> yeah, because it says there's something about a strategy challenge. We didn't do a strategy challenge. Yeah, we never did a strategy challenge. So I don't. Oh, God. There's a lot of blood in here. Oh, there's definitely a fight in here, dude. There's that much blood in the room. <clears throat> Was there a strategy challenge that I chained, that I skipped? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe when I initiated the combat, I skipped the challenge or something. Huh. <clears throat> oh my! Oh no! It's Hell's dead! The great worm is nothing but bone and memory. It died! Ah, oh, fuck! Well, what? We came out here for nothing? Can we talk to it? You think the dragon can talk? What if we speak to the dead? Can't target undead? The dragon was undead? It totally didn't say that. When we were trying to get this dragon, we didn't know it was undead. So what, what made it undead? What the heck? Maybe it is still alive. It's a zombie. It is. Uh-oh. Whoa! What's going on here? Floods your mind and memory in a great torrent of power. He is with you. He is within you. He is you. Huh. Disbelief and resentment rise within you. Only to be stopped at your mouth. The worm has claimed you. And speaks through you. I guess we're about to find out what's going on. I am Ansor, heart of the gate, butchered in flesh, risen in spirit. Search your mind for what possesses it. Ansor wends his way through your mind like an unstoppable river. Your body is unmoving, yet thought flows effortlessly between you. The spirit pauses, and you feel the astral prism stir. Ansel senses the Emperor's presence within it. Answer me, Facey. Why have you come? Uh, Facey, I covered your trials. I'm no coward. I'll say that. A deep sigh resonates within you. 
Torrin stills, only disturbed by the dragon's next words. Brack, my words aren't meant for you. Oh, he's talking to the Emperor. They're meant for him. The Emperor stirs in the astral prison, then in you. Calm, curious, and detached. Okay. presence has stirred me as it ever did I am awake what did he just say Answer. It's been too he's Baldurin the Emperor is Baldurin the original founder of Baldur's Gate why the hell didn't he tell us that yeah he called you Baldurin a name I once answered to a name I did not expect to hear again at least of all why didn't he tell us? Friend. Yes. And more. Until you kill me. Oh, shit. Have you come to dance on my bones, Alderan? Was slaying me not satisfaction enough? Satisfaction? No. You left me no choice. You had every choice. You were becoming illithid. I offered you merciful death. You oh shit, this is interesting. <clears throat> and now you bring your throne before me. How far has the great Balderan fallen? Answer the question, Mind Flayer, you owe it to both of us. This is tiresome. I passed your trials and deserve a reward. A touching reunion. How about letting me go? I'll say thrall. I am no thrall. Still. Ansur's consciousness hovers just above yours, searching, seeing. Dear Ansur, enough! I gave you everything, Bordoran, and you repaid me in slaughter. It is time I return the favor. Let my bones rise and the storms. Oh, gather. great. Witness, Borderan. The final tempest has come. I am the heart of the gate. I am the one who roars. This time, you will not escape it. Oh, come on. Well, Lazelle's prone now. Good thing I long rested. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Well, we're gonna split the part here. Let's inspect Anser, the undead dragon, and see what he's got. He is completely immune to any necrotic damage. No, it's halved. Yes. He's immune to lightning, immune to poison, and necrotic have. Can't use chain lightning on this, dude. It won't do anything. Great worm scales. All incoming damage reduced by two. Mutable form. Spells that alter someone's form will have no effect. Okay. Opportunity attack. Turn resistance. Affected entity has advantage on saving throws against any effect that would turn an undead. Ah, so basically, you can turn him. But you're going to have a very decreased chance to do it. So it's just him and these two elementals, right? Let's take a look at the elementals. Water Myrmidon. Reduced everything, basically. Immune to poison. Permanently armed. You cannot disarm the Myrmidon. Is this the same thing? It's another Water Myrmidon. Okay. All right. Well, this will be interesting. He's level 17, by the way. Great. I love fighting level 17 creatures. Oh, uh, yeah. This will be uh, something else. All right. Let's go ahead and save. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see if we can beat on, sir. We came down here to, to get help from him. And he's an undead dragon that's pissed off that the emperor who is actual, actually Baldurin, who, fo who founded Baldur's Gate, killed him. And now we got to deal with this shit? What an asshole. All right. Let's do this in the next part.